Hey everybody. Um, so this project is called the Tessellation Project and it's based loosely on the work of M.C. Escher, who is a famous Dutch artist um, and his dates are 1898 to 1972. And he is fairly well known for his interesting tessellations or tilings of the plane. Um, and if you look down at your own floor tile, you're going to see that uh, there aren't any gaps um, and all the shapes, in, in the case of your floor, the squares uh, fit together. Um, Escher took it a, quite a bit step further and created different shapes um, that also tile the plane. Um, this one is based off of a square. And uh, notice that uh, there's positive and negative elements too. Uh, and fish are interspersed with the birds to form a seamless plane without any spaces. So let's see. Um, let's take a look for another one. I'm having to actually record this separately um, from when I did the video, so there may be a couple of gaps in my approach here. Um, the idea though, okay, let's take a look at another one. Same idea, we have fishes and birds connected, filling up the space with no gaps. Uh, this one is based off of tessellating triangles now, and six triangles gang up to become a hexagon. And if you deform two edges of the triangle, you get a very interesting and complex pattern like this. Uh, the only thing that's uh, alternating are the colors that are used to fill it. Um, this would be a lithograph, which is a printmaking technique that uses stone, a large stone. Um, let's see, here's another one. The same thing, it's a lithograph, roughly 1930s, 1935. Uh, birds, in this case, uh, blue and white. And so, let's go on and create our own then. So, say File New and make it 10 by 10 inches. In this case, I kept the resolution down around 90 and I made the background white and the mode color mode is grayscale. Say OK to that. In my case I'm going to cancel this because I have one already. And uh, control zero to fill the screen. And next we want to put up a grid in order to build our tessellation or tiling from. Um, because it's 10 by 10 inches here. Um, I want there to be five squares across and five squares down, so I want to make each square two inches. So we say View and Show and Grid. And take a look here. We've got a grid, but it's every inch. So I have ten boxes across and ten down. So that's too many, so we've got to get into the preferences. So go Edit, Preferences at the bottom. Sorry, it's off the screen. and. You want to choose guide grid, guides and grids. Um, so I'm hunting for that right now. And that's units, which is the wrong thing, so I'm canceling that. And try it again. Edit preferences and guides. And then I'm going to choose a grid line every two inches instead of every one. Say OK to that, leaving everything else the same. And there we have it, five boxes across and five down. Zooming in, uh, what I want to do next is create a deformation of two edges of one box. And I need to obey a rule. I want always to hit this point, and I don't want the 
deformation to go out more than a box and a half to maximum. And I need to hit uh, the next point over to the right, that one, and the one down in the lower right corner. Okay, so and I'm going to go out beyond the line and then come in inside the line and go back to that corner and then do the same thing, go out, come in, go back to the final corner. So click and drag. So you click, click and drag, click and drag without letting go of the mouse, and then click and now let go. Now click again and let go, um, don't let go of the mouse, click again, don't let go of the mouse, and bend, and then end in the corner. <clears throat> Okay, next what we want to do is stroke this path. This is a vector path. Um, and with black in the foreground, I click on the Paths tab, and then I set up my brush. So I click on the Brush tool, and right now it's my brush is set to 50 pixels wide, which is too much. And so I want to set the hardness to 100% and take the size down to, let's try 8 pixels in this case. see how that looks. And then over in the bottom of the Paths tab, the second button in will, when you click that button, it strokes that vector with the brush uh, painting the foreground color. I thought that was a little fat, so I'm going to bring this down to six pixels. And do that again. Good. Uh, next I have to get rid of the work path. Uh, it's just going to be in the way, so I'm sending it to the trash. And next what I want to do is copy the black using the magic wand tool. The wand is hiding under the quick selection tool, and you have to click and hold that tool down to get to the magic wand. It may help be helpful to zoom in. See, I didn't quite get it there. So let me zoom back in and click on the black. Good. It's all selected with the marching ants. And now copy this with a control C or edit copy and then paste control V. Okay, um, and next we want to fill out the rest of the row with Control V, Control V, or just holding down the Control button, hit V, 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 V. Um, okay, see how I align each of the points right to the edge of the square, and I want to make sure I catch this one to the far left with that little piece right there. Okay, and the last one that goes off the page. Don't worry about that. Good. Next, what I need to do is merge these layers. I'm holding, um, clicking the first layer and then um, holding shift and clicking the last layer and then right clicking and selecting merge layers. And actually, the, one of these elements is on the background, so I should merge layer 5 down into the background as well. If I another thing I can do is double click the background because it's a pain. So see how that one isn't connected. Okay, and let's see what I did. Yeah, I merged it in. Okay, <clears throat> you can merge it with a Control E. So it's basically rinse and repeat at this point. Zoom in. Select the black with your magic wand, then go up to the menu and select similar, which will pick up all the black. Zoom out with Control Zero, copy this, Control C, and paste Control V. So that's working smart because I copied the whole line at once, so I don't have to constantly do all 25 of them. And Oops, see there's 
That's the background, so let me just toss that. Okay. So I don't have the background white to get in the way at this point. If these aren't quite aligning onto the square at this point, that doesn't matter either. I just want the, the elements to line up. Uh, take it one at a time so you don't get too confused. Okay, and one more for the top. Good. Once it's all laid out, then flatten everything down. Uh, the easiest is to go over to Layer. At the bottom, Flatten Image. Make sure you save this. File Save As and save it as a JPEG and know where you're putting it so um, you can upload it to the blog. Calling it Tessellation 1. Good. Now, as variation, um, we could do an Escher-like um, alternating lights and darks, a positive and negative. So go over to the... Uh, so every other one we're going to color in with black. Um, and I'm going to use the bucket tool, which is hiding underneath the gradient tool. Right there is the gradient tool. Click and hold, and you get the bucket tool. And then every other solid, you can just fill it with black. It's kind of fun. Now watch what happens here. Whoops. What happened was I have a hole. So let me undo that with Control-Z. Zoom in. And the black just flowed through the hole. And um, so the easy fix on this is to grab the brush tool <clears throat> and just paint in with six pixel wide brush your black and just fill it in. Okay, so the color just flows through the hole like water through a hole in a dam. So we just need to plug that up and it'll be all good to go. Control zero to zoom out. And continue along every other one here. Don't forget the edges, too. So every other one. I'm going to go along and fill in the black lined ones here. Yep. And that little corner. Oh, well. Uh, and a couple along the bottom that I could do. But anyway, uh, go ahead and save this. Um, tessellation 2 and then we'll try one more uh, this time instead of with curves we could use a straight line so I'm just selecting all and then I'm hitting the backspace in CC and it's saying fill with white and I'll say OK um, ignore that if you get that and that erases everything and now we can start again Zoom in, grab the pen tool, and this time just click and click your way around. No, you don't have to hold it and bend it with the mouse. Just go click, click, click to each of these points. Oh, there is a grid line there, but the video isn't showing it. Outside, inside, into the corner again, right here. So that did hit the corner, um, even though you can't see it here on the video. Go to the Paths palette, and mine is hiding. Uh, I went to Window, if, if it's missing, and chose Paths. And then I dragged up my layers, because I'm working on a small screen here. Click on the brush, click on the second tool, and fill it. Toss your work path away. Take your magic wand, and click on the black. 
and renaming background to zero. I'm going to toss it quickly this time. So magic wand, black, copy, control C. and paste control V. Okay, and layer zero I'm dragging to the trash because it's got all the white and I don't want to deal with it. Hmm, so I think I'm just hitting delete then. Okay. Um, oh, that didn't work. I was dragging it to the paths trash, that's why. And when I misclicked here, they both got um, uh, connected into, uh, well, anyway. Okay, so control V, control V, and we're doing the same thing here. Just filling out the row. Once you have that, layer, flatten image near the bottom. Zoom in, grab the magic wand, click black. Select similar, select similar, copy that, control C, and then control V. Move tool, the letter V is the shortcut, and move these down. It's a great little puzzle, and uh, it's on that theme again of great complexity comes from very simple things. You could nudge, um, nudge that with the arrow keys too, with the move tool on, to get it aligned properly. And then layer, flatten image, save this as a JPEG, and name it Tessellation 2, or 3, whatever it is. And then go ahead and color alternate boxes again, or alternate cross shapes. <laughs> Okay, make sure you save it and post it to the blog and hope you enjoyed this exercise and we'll catch you in the next video.